a stranger's gonna cut. No. Sorry, Titus, it's just so damn catchy, that song of the summer. You know, every summer has a song. <laughs> this year, with old Clive Palmer. <laughs> He's exhumed Twisted Sister. And, and <laughs> we hate it. We hate Clive Palmer, but we just can't escape it. And it's been stuck in my head for the last two months. Now, for yeah. those who haven't guessed already, we are back. Now in our 20th big year, it's the Variety Hour <laughs> podcast. Uh, back again for 2019. I'm Sergio Paradise. I'm joined, as always, by a man with a pocket full of jiggers, whatever they are. It's Titus O'Reilly. Oh, I'm thrilled. We're, we've only come back because it's time to announce your candidacy for the Palmer United Party, or whatever it's called at <laughs> this time. It's the United Australia Party. Is it? Yeah. Right. I think so. I'd imagine that. Did you get Did you get the text message? I didn't get the text. I know quite a few people who did. The thing I'm continually wondering about this whole Clive Palmer thing, mate, is <laughs> how's he paying for it? Has he, has he paid for it up front? Because I know, like, if, if you and I wanted to advertise this podcast on free-to-air commercial television, yeah. they go, sure, boys, come right in, but pay me up front. I think he's got money. It's more that he's got money by... He owes a lot of money to various yeah. people, and but he is he is spending an absolute small fortune. on his ad. Oh yeah, and uh, it's totally going to work. Oh you? yeah, he'll, he'll swoop into power. You knew, I knew it was. I knew I'm suffering in terms of you know the popularity stakes when it, it got to halfway through, you know January, yeah. and the only messages I'd received all year was from Deliveroo <laughs> and Clive Palmer. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big summer, isn't it? <laughs> Well, we should say we had a uh, we took a bit of time off this summer. Usually we went back, but but uh, that was a lot of like the fact that I was down at the beach, as all Melbourne supporters are. Were and uh, I didn't I, I didn't I couldn't I kept finding excuses not to come back. Basically, oh, exactly. I mean, I had north. I was up at the northern beach, and uh, up in uh, north New South Wales. Took some good beach bars up there. Yeah, good beach bars. I, my first night back at the beach hotel in Byron Bay, I saw. There was a big poster up on the wall, Buck to Karate. Really? They were at $24 for it. You know. How you don't have a Karate sponsorship already well, is well, beyond I, me. I took a photo of it with my phone and put it straight onto Twitter, and immediately people are going, you know, where are you, where are you? you know, there you go. But, but at six bucks a bottle, it's not that much cheaper than just buying your own, surely. No, I mean, well, you, you get you get the metal. Bars tend to frown on it when you turn up with your own coronas. <laughs> and your own. You know, your own buckets. And your own buckets. I <laughs> mate, just put some ice <laughs> in that bucket for me, will you? I'm here for some ice. Uh, <laughs> so it was a good summer, though? Yeah, it wasn't a bad summer. Yeah, it was good, good to get away. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we, we have had a bit of a break. And, back in, and like there's a fresh. fair bit has gone on over the summer. And just this week back into the swing of things, a bit going on just here. At the oh, yeah, we'll definitely get to some of that. We should say uh, Nathan Brewer wrote in, you've been missing most of the summer. Are you in the Australian cricket team? So yeah, that's a very good question to kick things off. <laughs> it was a bit like that. But, yeah, they, they, I'll tell you what, they, did we expect much more, though? Not really, no. Well, we weren't expecting them to beat India. Oh, they're so... Yeah, no, well, they should at home. Well... In in years past, I should have, but but you know whether it's selectors or just we just weren't good enough. You no, know, you know? The, the fact that we don't seem to produce anyone that can bat at test level anymore. Well, that's right. There's, there's plenty of hit and giggle batsmen around, but you know it's going to take it. I've always said this: it takes years to work Pat Howard out of this system. <laughs> and uh, has he popped up anymore? And rugby union still hasn't managed yeah. to do it. Like he basically ruined that sport, and yeah. then. It's going to take, take a while. The like the way they ma- mixed up the Sheffield Shield and did all that nonsense. I still can't follow it all. Yeah, but, but it yeah. just no one plays much. Like it's not the intensity. Sheffield of, Shield just yeah. that was the rock, the bedrock of Australia's success forever, and he decided to tinker with it. Oh, exactly. I remember when we were young, you're going through a school, and, and there was such a the clear pathway was. It, if you were a very good schoolboy cricketer, then you would play district cricket, yeah. hopefully make the seniors of district cricket, in, and we're talking in Melbourne, Victoria here. And then, and if you were very, very good in senior-level district cricket, you might get a game in the Sheffield Shield. Yeah. And then who knows what can go beyond that. But now it's, the pathways are so convoluted. Who knows where they're – I don't know where they're going. It's, 
It, it's like one of those mazes that you take your kids to in, in the summer, you know. You just drop them down one end and see if they can make their way out the other. <laughs> and sometimes they don't make it. No, and if, and if you do make it out of the maze, you end up with a baggy green. I feel yeah. we're back with good form that it's taken us, you know, less than five minutes to bag Pat Howley. <laughs> <laughs> we're all else <laughs> It's like we're, we're definitely back. Uh, now, we got a gift. You and I last week. Yeah. Uh, exchange of messages and confirming we were going to be back this week. And then I should find the text message because I just ran, like, so I was all ready yeah. to have the, you know, be, to be back. I'm just going to find your text message because I, I was out and about. Sunday, I think, yeah. As I, you know, as I want to do. And uh, I just got this uh, text message from you just randomly. Illegal substance commonly used at Oktoberfest. Yeah, and that was all. And I, so I straight away, I was like, what's it going on about? You didn't even know what I was doing. I hadn't looked yet, so I dove on Twitter and found the jackpot stuff. And oh. I thought, oh, thank you, Jack, for helping us. Yeah, back. yeah. Jack, you know, he just did kick things off for us just perfectly. So we should mention Jack uh, Watts, for those that don't know, and I think pretty much everyone does, he was filmed at Oktoberfest in Munich. Uh, basically snorting a white powder off uh, the breasts of a, a woman. Uh, I believe willingly, it looked like from the video, on both both parts. Yeah, I mean, she, she didn't seem to be, you know, but, objecting to it. But. but not necessarily a great look to be snorting white powder, which seems to be and it's, 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 its own sort of genre of video now. Out of a, a fairly, he looked like he'd done it before. A fairly substantial little package, I've got to say. <laughs> he looked like he'd done it before, yeah. didn't he? So, uh, and then he actually said uh, in the video as he was doing it, it shows him as he's pouring it and about to do it, he starts shouting, yes, yes, all right, are we ready, are we ready? And it looked like he was ready. Now, at first it, it was reported that it looked like cocaine. Well, see, so, you know, that, that phrase white powder, it, it covers a fair, yeah. <laughs> and that, like, naturally everyone assumed that because, you know, you, it, it is a, a, a drug that's, at best, it's snorted. Yeah, if you're going to snort, no, almost every time I can think of, yeah, a, 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 wherever someone's snorting a white powder off another person, yeah, it's it's rarely it's not salt. No, <laughs> it's it's not flour. It's not sugar. No, it's it's usually cocaine. But as Jack said, it was uh, a combination of methyl glucose and sugar. Yeah, so which apparently- coincidentally, <laughs> we're often used to cut cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, this is a legal substance. I mean, one. This is his his manager and his explanation yeah. of it, right? So, yeah. And you and I, we're the trusting types. Yeah. He's got no reason to lie about this. No. So he said that it was not cocaine, but this widely uh, this legal substance widely used, which is it's called it's a harmless peppermint mix known as uh, Weizen Cox. Yeah. Ooh. It's a it's a German thing. It's, it's one of so those wacky Germans. Yeah, so apparently it's menthol sugar, glucose, and you snort it, and I assume it gives you a bit of a buzz. And, and you, talk, you you mentioned his his manager, you know, who's Paul Connors, who who is arguably the leading player manager in the AFL. Yeah, I love the fact that as soon as five minutes after the the video emerged on Sunday, Paul Connors was quoted, and this is a great quote: "It's not what you not you think." Yeah, you know. <laughs> well, okay. What is it then, Paul? Well, so apparently it's actually got, as well as having a menthol and all those things in it, apparently it, it, this is what his manager said, it's clearly a legal tobacco-based powder right. used widely. So at Oktoberfest. So the thing is here is um, why would you, uh, why if, you know, why, it's a tobacco-based product. Yeah. Kind of as an athlete, that's not a great look. No. I admit it's better to look than probably cocaine. Yeah. I mean, I actually fall into the camp a little bit of on these things. Is I don't really care what athletes get up to they, in the off-season yeah. because I kind of think there's so much. People are such hypocrites about this. Yeah. That, I mean, I can understand the argument about illegal drug practice to be able to field and all that sort of stuff because it could be seen as performance anyway. Yeah. But like on the on the holidays, but the Jack like. Watts yeah. is already he's you, you know if he was playing at an elite level, people like regularly people would be going, oh well. well but he's not exactly nailing it. Well, if you saw if you have a close look at the video and you look at his eyes in there, yeah, he uh, he looked like he'd been given the the Oktoberfest a fair whack. 
before he pulled out the bag of white powder. Yeah. In fact, somebody said he looked about as wasted as his entire career. <laughs> <laughs> so we had that from Jack Watts, which I think more than anything just, you know, it, it reiterates the AFL's position. Don't You're in trouble because you got filmed doing this. Which is always the kick. Exactly. Like, I mean, we had this discussion last year. When, with uh, Mumford, I think. With, with Shane Mumford is that, you know, it's never, never a great idea to be filmed when you're consuming an illegal drug. <laughs> or know. legal. Or illegal case. drug, yeah. You know, it's just, just <laughs> as, and, and Jack came out yesterday, Jack Watts, and, you know, he was very, very contrived about yeah. the whole thing. And, and, and he was the first to admit that it, it was a shocking look, quote, <laughs> unquote. But did you see the look on his face? He was standing right outside the Port Adelaide headquarters. Yeah. And he had that look on your face. It's like, you know, the kid who's just come out of the principal's office after being cane. Yeah. He, he had obviously been read the riot act. Yeah, yeah. By whether it was Kochi or, or someone else in it, Port Adelaide. Yeah. And I, now we don't know this, but I think it'd be fair to assume that Jack might have been told, this is your last chance, buddy boy. Yeah. You know, oh, well. You, you, you know, you wouldn't want to be trying this on again. No. <laughs> or you'd be back playing for old Brighton sooner than you know. You, and your 600 grand a year will be long gone. Uh, so that was uh, Jack's, what Jack did this summer. Uh, Port Adelaide had a, a few things. That was that Ollie Wines who injured his uh, sh- shoulder. Um, yeah. Water ski. Is that a worse look than snorting white powder off a woman's cleavage? Dislocating his shoulder. Well, I, I got to say yeah. that the wine thing is more likely to lead to significant in physical injury. Well, that's true. Although but, at Toberfest, I know a few people can get in trouble. <laughs> but uh, the, the, water skiing, you know, it's, it's a, a good, you know, good oh, healthy. Good but healthy there, there are it, there, there's a very interesting thing here because I know um, a few of the players. I think Patrick Dangerfield at the Players Association came out and said. You know, players have got to blow off steam in the off season, need yeah. to have fun, and they're physical people. So you know, you can't stop doing everything. And I, I kind of do get that to a thing. I think you know, you get to the point where you try and make these guys like robots, yeah. and then it, it just they just blow up because it's just that you know, you've got everyone has to let off steam yeah. in some way. But I also, you know, there's that thing in the states where well, you're getting paid huge amounts of money. So there's a lot of them have clauses where you can't yeah. play, you can't yeah. go skiing, you, you can blow go, off steam and all this, but. But the there's, ultra risky physical yeah, things a, they, they frown on, and so I can understand why there, there is an argument there. Which if you, you know now that the game gets very professional, there's a lot of money involved and all this sort of stuff. You know, would you really want your players? Which is why I find AFL excellent. But, oh, you know, not that it's not as risky as water skiing because water skiing is at least a guess a sport. <laughs> um, so yeah, you know, there's more body contact than probably AFL. <laughs> It makes a lot more. I at least understand water sport, uh, water skiing. Um, so that's what happened with him. So that sort of thing. So I sort of, I do feel a bit sorry for Wines because, like, what are you going to do? Wrap him up in cotton wool forever? Well, exactly. Like, and it's not like it was the first time Molly Wines has been on a water ski. He's, yeah, he's, he's quite very good, good at it. Good, he's been so. doing it since he was a little kid. Uh, Carlton seemed to say, "Well, you think you can have a bad preseason? <laughs> We're going to top your port." Uh, they had one. They had a uh, Thomas Bug announced he was. Uh, Leaving, yeah, he's just um, retired, which is sort of like effective the, immediately. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So he, apparently, he's got a social media, like a social media influencer business. Yeah, well, he's which he calls people, it a business, but really, it's just his girlfriend has a, a lot of followers on it. Right. Whether that's enough of a business, well, these days, who would know? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. it can be enough. Yeah, of a business. it can. Be. People have built huge careers. Well, I just hope. Oh, Tommy Buggers, you know. I just wish Instagram was around before my my looks left me. <laughs> <laughs> before I lost my bikini body. Because <laughs> I could have made a point. You've got, got the dad bod. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even a hot dad bod. <laughs> but you know what? I, like, it is this yeah. whole career that yeah. just didn't exist. It ain't like, like from Maroon 5, <laughs> put it that way. <laughs> uh, so Bug did that. And then we had um, uh, Alex Vasolo, who's come over from Collingwood. Yeah. Uh, to join Carlton. Co- Carlton He's should, brought a bit of Collingwood culture Carlton with him. should hasn't? never take anyone from Collingwood. No. You think about Mick Malthouse, Daisy Thomas, now yeah. for Solo. I, it, lately it hasn't been good for them. Now for Peter Solo. McKenna, and then you go back. You, for, yeah, for so, Solo yeah. got in a fight with, uh, uh, on Australia Day, he said he got in like a play <laughs> fight. A play I, mean, fight. You gotta, I mean, these stories that you get yeah. told, like, you know, it's like, I mean, for one, 
first time didn't involve a dog in the preseason, which was nice. But he apparently they were play wrestling or anything. He ended up just severely injuring himself yeah. and all miss a bunch of stuff. Now they put out that video of him. Yeah. And it dead set looked like a the, I've seen like ISIS hostage videos with high production values. Yeah. So, what they're doing down at Carlton. And, 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 and he looked about as happy to be there as all that. And, 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 and is the ISIS sort of analogy. I mean, he, he wouldn't have been at all surprised if they'd taken him, walked him off camera and doused him in, in, in petrol and, put, <laughs> and, and put, him, put him inside a cave. Oh, welcome yeah. back, Serge. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> welcome back. Oh, we can, it, only, it took you full 15 minutes to go way past the line. <laughs> Uh, uh, well, it's, you know, it's all in good fun. It's uh, all in good fun. So he, yeah. so he was just being an idiot, basically. Which yeah, shows that you fight. I mean, you can, but you can ban water skiing and all these things. But you can't, as, as they always say, you can't legislate against stupidity. No, you cannot. You know. And it, well, anyway, it's just nice to see and somebody. Was it stupid or was it just purely bad luck? Well, Whenever I, I hear the phrase "play fight" amongst adults at, yeah, a, yeah, at a drunken at party, a drunken party, party yeah, yeah. on Australia Day. You know, I, I know that I know the hottest one hundred was pretty dull this year. <laughs> Wasn't it nice to see a, a Carlton player getting physical though? <laughs> well, just on on the Jack Watts thing, there was somebody on Twitter said the first time he's gone head first into a contest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we had all the great things. So naturally, uh, our dear listeners um, <laughs> making making hay while the sun shines. I have a few questions about all of this. Didn't they come good on oh, Sunday? I, yeah. I couldn't even put all of them in. We had so yeah. many. But Mark Hayward wrote in, Jack Watts disappoints Australian cricket selectors baffle, a horse trainer's caught cheating. Have you considered saving on production costs and just replaying old podcasts for 29 for 2019? <laughs> we, we could make this just our deja vu year. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't feel like, like, you know, you go away and you come back. It's the exact things, thing have, things haven't changed much. Uh, Aaron Bevan wrote in, after Ollie Wines and Jack Watts, should Port ban their players from motorboats? <laughs> is, it, is motorboating a, a euphemism or something? Yeah, like that? yeah. It, I think it's, it's, for, it's for rubbing your, your, your uh, head between a, a woman's breasts. Is that the, correct? Yeah, it's She's an not, American term. I thought I would have known that. <laughs> I'm shocked you don't know that one. I would, the sort of bars you frequent, I would yeah. have thought that would have been like Motorboat. right up next to the poster of the uh, <laughs> bucket of Coronas. Uh, Hayden Cloak wrote in, is cocaine giving, uh, is cocaine giving other white powdered substances a bad name? <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard it. Like, to me, if you're going to snort something up, like, up your nose. Yeah. I can understand it if it's going to make you feel amazing. Yeah. It'd have to, so if it's a legal high, I currently think it's not worth it. Just stick to alcohol. Yeah, exactly. What's wrong with alcohol? If it's powdered menthol and nicotine. Yeah, what's the point? It's just not... <laughs> It doesn't sound that much fun to me. Yeah, like, I, I'm just Compared saying, to like, coke, huh? you just, <laughs> <laughs> you, Which like, I'm just saying, snorting something up your mouth, like, having a beer or a wine or yeah. whatever, is, it's refreshing and nice, and it's a normal human sort of activity to, you know, have a drink of something, right? So, it's a pleasurable experience. Snorting something up your nose, even if it's <laughs> great, is not, no one says, oh, I just love snorting stuff up my nose. No. I don't get what it is. It's and, just a great feeling. And the thing about alcohol is it is fairly well regulated. In that you, you, you have a fair idea. If you have 15 schooners, yeah. you, you know what condition you're going to be in. <laughs> <laughs> to a degree. If you have eight buckets of Corona. Yeah. Whereas <laughs> you, 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 you white powder, yeah. whether, it, whether it's cocaine, whether it's something else, whether it's a menthol nicotine brand, <laughs> direct from you. You're everything. You're <laughs> still not 100% sure what you're getting. Well, this is a legal one that probably is like fairly. Uh, uh, in, or, yeah, Germans have always been. I, I'm looking pretty forward big to on legislation. <laughs> Are you looking forward to when a, a video. Do you think every player now, is, whenever anyone's caught snorting white powder, do you think like Mumford and all the rest are like, damn it, why didn't I think of this? <laughs> Because it's, it's a legal you could have substance. Said I was at the Oktoberfest. Or just yeah. say, oh, you know, it's just a legal substance. Yeah. I just happened to take it nasally. At home in <laughs> Melbourne. <laughs> and it wasn't October. No. Uh, so uh, <laughs> the next one was uh, Paddy uh, Quiggan wrote in Are D's fans laughing more about Watts or Bugs? Oh, Bug. No. I got to say, the thing that I never. I got to say, that, 
There were a few Dees fans I remember talking to at the time that were really genuinely upset about what's been let yeah. go. Uh, I was not in that camp. But since then, he's gone out of his way to make them feel better. Yeah, he, he certainly did. I agree with that. There, there was a bit um, a, a, a genuine feeling amongst some Melbourne supporters that, you know, this could come back to bite us, you know. Mm. Um, but he, he has, yeah, as you say, gone out of his way to make sure that that doesn't happen. No, I think a lot of people liked him, but, you know, but he's just not a footballer. He's a, <laughs> he's a lovely guy. all reports, he's a very likeable character. Yeah. Uh, I'd like, you know, I think going Oktoberfest with Jack Watts would be a lot of fun. Yeah, well, it's, it's, But, you know, you know, oh, barracking for him was not fun. I, I needed some of that glucose powder yeah. while I was watching him play. Glucose <laughs> menthol and, and a bit of nicotine. You know? <laughs> but what about Tommy Buck? At least, I mean, the unfortunate thing about Tommy Bug is that he will now be remembered for belting Callum Mills and nothing Do you think else. he was ever going to get past that, really? I mean, I unless he, he went on to really that, have a cracking career. If, if, if he, I mean, because he, he was a very high draft pick in the early days of the Giants. Yeah. So, I mean, he could, obviously he was a very good junior footballer. If he had turned the corner, say, at Carlton, he could have put that behind him. But, yeah, but, but Barry now, Hall repeatedly has. Yeah, but, but now, no, he's gone. He, that's it. I do like And, and the only thing now for Tom Bug is for his red hot girlfriend to give him the arse. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> what I was just thinking. Like, he's Maybe basically, she's retires effective immediately. It does feel a bit like he's quit his day job to hang out with his Instagram girlfriend. Yeah, it does a bit. And, which and, which and is a risky it's not game. A logic, it's not a completely illogical position, but it is a bit hinged on one person not getting sick of you. Yeah, it's, oh, I think he's playing a risky game. because you know. If, do you think the Instagram model is going to be as... Interested in dating someone who's not an AFL footballer? Well, you see, that's a very good point. I was going to say the same thing, is that now that he's not, you know, getting invites, well, he probably never got an invite to Brownlow, but, you know, if he's, yeah, if he's not, he doesn't have all the perks that, that go. That cachet, yeah. Yeah, the, the perks that go with being an AFL footballer, including you know, a fairly substantial salary each year. Yeah. Will he be quite as attractive? Is that, you know, yeah. Let's face it, he's, he's a short ass and he's got bad hair. You Isn't know, it amazing how models and AFL footballers seem to um, end up together so regularly? Mm. I mean, it's just amazing that their personalities just gel so well. The, and, and, and the dual... What a coincidence. The dual shallowness never <laughs> creates depth between them. <laughs> uh, Jade E wrote in, does Jack Watt's behaviour put him in frame for a leadership role in the Australian cricket team? Oh. <laughs> I think that's probably quite true. Yeah, he, he probably, yeah, I mean, we're not <laughs> suggesting that the Australian cricket team it's not like he ran, I've ever been to the Oktoberfest. It's not like he rubbed sandpaper against the ball. <laughs> <laughs> he just sorted a illegal substance. Well, let's see him sandpapered that girl's cleavage. <laughs> that was, you know. <laughs> Is that motor buckling? That's, no, I think you're, I'm thinking, it's, it's not actually, uh, it's not a wooden hull involved <laughs> which means sandpaper. I think you're, I think it's strange that I'm having to just explain to you. I, I never thought when I started this podcast that one day I'd be trying to explain motor buckling to you and you, and you not understanding oh, it yeah, at all. I'm, I'm still not quite getting it. I tell you what, it. just just quietly, I think you, you might need. You might need a lift with some white powder snorted up your nose. Oh, I might, uh, might get some of that. What, what do we call it? That, <laughs> that, that wheezing pulver. I might, <laughs> might stop the 7 Eleven after the year. <laughs> Reese Tim's wrote in Should pill testing be introduced yeah. at Oktoberfest? <laughs> <laughs> Just to check. Well, it won't stop anything, Reese. <laughs> uh, uh, Taukras wrote in. Who had the worst off season, Port or Carlton? Which is a good point. That's uh, it's got to say. Uh, I think Port Port had a pretty bad one. I, I, I think the difference is Carlton had a bad off season, but they're going to have a, a bad on a bad yeah. season. So you know, it's I don't think it's moved the needle yeah, a lot. And on. I think Port will miss Ollie Rhines <laughs> more than Carlton will miss Alex Fasolo. <laughs> well. Alex for solo not playing is kind of what he's not, not going to do. what he was recruited for. Uh, now, the other thing, the AFLW returned on the uh, weekend. And it was, How many um, of the games did you watch? I had a good crack at all four of them, actually. Uh, yeah, no, I watched all of them. Um, one of them I watched on replay, but I watched all of them. And um, I love the AFLW. Like, I, I know what, I love two things about it. Yeah. Uh, I, I 
few things about it. One, I loved it just being able to have footy on the weekend in that routine. I love yeah. that. And I love, um, and I, I just enjoy watching it. I think watching it develop amazing. And then my thing I love most is the blokes that get annoyed about it. Yeah. Just yeah. my favourite thing on uh, Twitter. And, and, and so more so this last weekend because everyone has been saying, and I've been saying, you've been saying as well, that the pathways, it's going to take a while yeah, yeah, yeah. For it to get through to, to reach that elite level. But I'm telling you, watching four, I, I, I didn't see the, the GWS game, but I saw the other four. And I tell you what, I reckon, and, and this is, I'm not being patronising at all, I'm genuine here, the standard has jumped enormously last year and, and I'm loath to attribute that to Steve Hockey's new rule changes. <laughs> I just reckon the, the girls are playing better standard footy. Well, was, yeah. I mean, it was good footy to watch on the weekend. Yeah, but the, the, the thing about it too is I just, you know, like I love people getting annoyed about it. It's like, well, don't watch. Like it's not for you anyway, to be honest. Yeah. It's for people that just – but also I, I got this a lot because I, I tweeted something about like, you know, footy being back. And I got all this good – it's not that. Oh, it's not so It's like, oh, yeah, good on it. Uh, like, so, you know, at least be original. But then I get a bunch of them going, it's no better than, uh, you know, third grade suburban footy. And I'm like, well, I also like third grade suburban I love, yeah. like footy. Yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> there's not like, it's not like I'm choosing. It's it doesn't like, have to if, be. If I'm walking past a park and there's a game of footy on, I will usually end up at least staying through a fair chunk of it. Like, I just like watching footy. It's, it doesn't matter. That's exactly it's not, right. We're, like, not everything is going to be the AFL. I mean, I've watched Carlton games. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just footy. But it's like, so true that when you're walking past a suburban game, you end up, you stop, you lean on the fence, yeah, it's and great. guarantee you'll stay until the end of the quarter. You go, oh, I'll just wait until yeah, the sign goes, then I'll So, fall, so when they mount that, that argument, I'm like, I, I don't get your point. Like, yeah. I like footy. Yeah. Like, you know, and I and I do think AFLW is trying to do a different thing. Where it's trying to open up the game to fifty percent of the population. Yeah. Which, if you love the sport, is a great thing. Yeah. Like, if you've got daughters or a sister, or also, why? I, the amount of blokes in my lifetime who've complained that their wife or something, and 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 I was very lucky because unlike most sports, it's got a good like representation of equal supporters, yeah. women and, and men. But I've had blokes go, oh, I wish, wish my partner liked footy. Yeah, yeah. well, here you Here's are. your chance, <laughs> Buster. This is going to be doing wonders for future. And so the other, the other thing, and I've touched on this too before, is that because of, of the huge upside of, of, we'll call it girls footy at junior level. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Is that is um, becoming a bonus for the for the junior boys footy now because it's making the clubs, you know, for, for every girls team, yeah. there's another 25 or 30 kids who have to pay their subs and they buy jumpers and buy the shop, shorts yeah. and socks. And that's more money that goes into the junior clubs, which means more money to be spent on the boys game as well mm. as, the, as the girls game. It's, it's, it's just a win-win. And I still maintain it won't be that far down the track that we won't have this... Um, not, it's the novelty value of it, it still exists a bit of go, oh, chicks playing footy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It'll be like the tennis. Nobody goes, oh, is this chicks playing tennis? Yeah, yeah. The yeah. Australian Open each year. It's just the men's and, and the, the women's. women's. Yeah, that's right. So, and, but I, I do genuinely reckon the, the, the um, standard of the game has gone up more so this year than when anyone would have thought it would. Well, it was great that it was good games as well because yeah. the AFL, I've got to say, they're Promotion of it has been abysmal. Yeah, woeful. You know, just woeful. And, and, and you know, it's considering the amount of bloody effort they've put in the AFLX, which... And, and the, the money they put The money it, yeah. and, the, like, the amount they've mentioned it and all this, like, and then, you know, and you look at it and just go, really? I mean, I, I can't see AFLX like, getting past it. Um, you know, and you and you look at it and they're apparently paying the captains 50 grand a night and all yeah. this sort of stuff. You're like... For, for what? two hours' work, you know? you know. For what? Like, so, you know, I, I thought it was, you know, great. There were some really good games too, so in the AFL. And, and despite the, the lack of promotion at all that, people went and watched them. Yeah, there were yeah. some good crowds. I mean, I remember looking at the, I think it was the game at Norwood, and that was, yeah. that looked like there were a lot of people at that. The game says that 
The one out of Casey wasn't that great. Place. I didn't go to the one in Casey. I was going to go. Oh, but and to was, be honest, one minute it's in Casey. It was 40 degrees. And it was 40 degrees. Have you been to Casey? Yeah, field? I've been to Casey's. Yeah, that's there, why I didn't go. On a hot day, it's it's a shock. But job. that's why I yeah. didn't go because yeah. I was like, I'm not driving like 45. I meant to Cranbourne I, and I, then standing in that like, baking For a Melbourne supporters are in like don't, you know, like I know that's, this is a Cameron Schwab legacy, right, yeah. being out there. But like... If it was at the Junction Oval or something like yeah. that, I would go every week. Every time I look at it and I'm like, it's on TV, do I drive out to Casey? I'd do it a couple of times a year yeah. for the AFW. But when I looked at it, it was like 40. There's no shade there no, at all. There's no. that little bit around. There's and not a tree like, well, why? So there's things like that which I think they could improve. Yeah. But uh, the rest of the crowds look, look pretty good. So, um, so it was good to have it back. I can't wait. And then we run into the actual... AFL men's as well, and it all. So I can't. Once the tennis is over, yeah, you kind of feel we're getting back to it. Yeah, oh, and that happens every year. I mean, you know, the, the only thing this year watching the tennis is that we managed to avoid all those promos for Mike Kitchen rules. <laughs> Did you like Channel Nine's coverage? Or? Oh, I thought it was fine. I thought it was just amazingly. Um, I know Tony Jones had a few things in that kind of, but, but most of it was pretty. I just thought. Um, vanilla, and I don't mean that necessarily meanly. It was just, it was fine. It wasn't. I didn't notice it that much. Yeah, which I, was a good thing because yeah, Channel agree. Seven. Remember with the last the year before the Australian Open. Remember they were cutting the ads and missing games. Yeah, like of not just little games, like big games. That like we just they'd come back from an ad and the game would be halfway through. Yeah, like so that and, I mean I had that those totally lost extended the ad breaks. You know, yeah, with, with you know, top and tail it with. Long promos, and yeah, you, you'd miss it. Yeah, uh, and uh, yeah, and so it's all the Channel Lines coverage is fine. I'll, t- I'll tell you who came out a winner. I reckon Channel Line was Todd Woodbridge. He's he was always a bit of a a bit player at Channel Seven. Yeah, and and he got, he, he did a lot of work on the Channel Line. He he is Mister Vanilla himself. He's pretty yeah, he's yeah, a pretty yeah. bland kind of character. But you need that sometimes in TV hosting at big sporting events because yeah. the the sport itself is supposed to be the star. Not necessarily the commentary team or the hosting team. Now with the with the tennis, yeah, they bring in your, your John McEnroe's and Jim Curry's mm-hmm. and those sort of guys, and they they take care of that star power kind of thing. But I thought I thought young Todd Woodbridge did a pretty good job. What did you think of Seven's cricket coverage? Well, again, I, I didn't watch that much of it to be honest. Uh, I, I watched it on Foxtel uh, right. because of the lack of ads. Did you like the Foxtel coverage? I thought the Foxtel coverage was fine. Yeah, I, I like Channel Seven's coverage. Yeah. I thought it was really good. Yeah. I thought they mixed it up. Well, there's bits of Fox Hill. I mean, I find Warney almost a parody. Yeah. So I, I found those bits a uh, hard slog. Yeah. And I find Brett Lee, like... Yeah, Brett Lee's hard work. So when it was Warney and Brett Lee, I'd flip it. But I watched a lot of Seven. I quite liked them. Yeah, all well, the, the bits I saw of Seven, I, I enjoyed as well. But do you know what it was like? It was like nine had, Nine's coverage had become so horrendous. Yeah. That Seven's, by contrast, seemed like, Academy Award winning. Yeah, it was. It, even if it had some of the same heads, which they yeah, they even seemed it less still annoying. Seemed like yeah, a breath yeah, of fresh air. Yeah, you know? they, they, they even like yeah. So and not having any Michael Clark yeah. was a beautiful. <laughs> and, and Mark Wall, a lot of people like Mark Wall, but he just seemed to me he just couldn't wait for the whole season to finish. I reckon he just. Yeah, yeah. He, he wanted to, I don't know, play golf or get out. Go to horse racing. Yeah. Which brings us to horse racing. Um, you would be shocked, uh, dear listener, if you're not following this, to learn that horse racing has been uh, hit by scandal. Yeah. <laughs> racing in Victoria. It's yeah. unbelievable. It really is unbelievable. It just like, I from know, one stupid I mean, I'm not surprised in a way. It is unbelievable. It's entirely predictable. But just the way it keeps going through. So, Darren Weir, is it? Very well known trainer. Yeah. Like arguably, I think he's got more horses oh, he's, he's, under his empire than anyone else. And, and his success. I mean, last, last season he, he trained close to five hundred winners, yeah. which is the most of any trainer in the world. Yeah. So this is not a bit player or no. a, a country trainer or something. This is like the pinnacle of trainers this in is the country, really. Tiger Woods of, of horse racing. Um, so he was raided by police. Um, uh, where they were uh, looking at, uh, they, they raided several uh, places and they found an unlicensed firearm, what's suspected to be cocaine. Yeah, 
or it could have been a, a methyl nicotine blend, uh, especially imported from, from and Germany. jiggers, which are uh, basically what I understand is they're sort of um, put against the horse's skin, and they're a bit like a, a taser. They give you a little jolt. They give you a, a, a shot. Yeah, not so not like the brutally, you know. No, not like doing your damage, but it sort no. of spurs the horse on. It's not like the ones you know, in the hangover that the kids fire at, at Bradley Cooper, you know. So, uh, so that's all. The police uh, raided them and then I think haven't actually charged them, released them without charge, but questioned them. There's still investigation going on there. Um, and then Racing Victoria have come out and there was still... As we're recording this, so there was uh, still decisions being made on some of this stuff. But He's, I can tell you now. I think at eight thirty tomorrow, um, being Wednesday, he's going to Darren Weir and his two offsiders are going to be fronting up to Racing Victoria to receive their penalty. Yeah, because they they had a show cause meeting yesterday. They tried until yeah. all hours of the yeah. I remember night. following on Twitter and, 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 and even by two a.m. they was he was yeah. still in there. I think the the word is in the. He's going to be suspended for four years on the jiggers, but not necessarily to the other stuff. Because the other stuff still has to go through a police process as well. Police process, and they're talking about you know, corruption and, and you know, fraudulent sort of running of forces and stuff. So like all that. sorts of stuff that we yeah. haven't even... Uh... I think we can safely assume that we've seen the back of Darren Weir. It does sound to me, to use a technical term, that he's rooted. Yes, that, and that is a, a, a technical term taken directly from the horse racing industry. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if we ever buy a horse, <laughs> you know what I'm going to call it? Batteries sold separately. <laughs> <laughs> the thing, it just, so it's a huge, like, Racing Victoria, just these these blows that keep coming to it where they just keep having yeah. these real, I mean, it's hard to pick, uh, in my book I wrote about this, you know, it, it's hard to pick someone in racing who hasn't had a dodgy moment Attached yeah. to them, like you know, Damien Oliver, Michelle Payne, and yeah. um, even Bart Cummings had that. Remember the tax scheme where all oh, that's right. yeah. uh, broke. You know, like there's there's a, uh, there's very gay okay, Waterhouse the has Waterhouse been in trouble. Family. The Waterhouse family, like yeah. you know, there's all these beloved characters in a way that they always put forward. But then when you actually, there's barely any of them you can point to and go, they're it, a complete. It's clone traditionally skin. been a sport for lovable rogues, you know, horse racing. But but there's there's a there's, there's that line between lovable row and dead set spiv, you know, and and, 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 <laughs> and to use a technical term. And it's, it's up there. But but what I don't understand is Racing Victoria have frequently yeah. been very soft on people. Yeah. Like, you know, they let Damien Oliver compete in a cup carnival, even though he had was sort of known he put, it was yeah. found out that he put money. He had a case going against me, put money on a horse. Yeah, he put 10 grand on, on a horse. A, that he was racing against. Yeah. And that horse won and his horse didn't. And you know what? He and, put 10,000, but he only got 11 back. So he, he took this risk to win a grand. Right. Um, but the thing about all that is, with that, is, he, you know, they, they've been soft regularly. What I don't get is, in horse racing, the industry as a whole is based on betting and yes. the punters wanting to bet money. And so, therefore, you would think as an industry, and if that dried up, unlike any other sport, yeah. and South Australia uh, banned betting on horse racing, um, you know, 100 plus years ago, and the industry died overnight yeah, without betting, right? So, if AFL didn't have betting or the NRL didn't have betting or cricket didn't have betting, it would still function as a sport. Yeah. But it, it, horse racing wouldn't. So, for them, the integrity of the sport is like almost more important in ways than anything else. Will punters be able to feel like they can handle yeah. their money with confidence that they're not going to get screwed? But it never works that way. One, the, they always forgive people and let them back in very lean. So people have been shown to be fixing races or cheating or all this sort of stuff. And then on the flip side, the punters don't seem to care. The punters sort of have factored into their heads that it's a dodgy thing they're betting yeah. on. And, and, and they, they might lose because they're just hopeless at betting or it's a mug's game. or that it's rigged, but they don't seem to care what reason. They don't seem to get annoyed. And, that, and even the language used by racing authorities w- with your dodgy characters, they're never banned from racing. No, they're that's warned what I'm saying. off racetracks. <laughs> you are warned off the racetrack. Yeah, you know, just if you don't show up. Yeah, it's just, you know, and what's going to happen, you know? And 
So it is amazing to me the way it's just never, like, so they're never serious about actually cleaning it up. Now, I know there'll be people out there going, oh, there's a lot of good people in horse racing. And, like, and I actually think they're probably, I, I know there well, is. There, is, there yeah. are people that just love the horses, they love the race. Love, but, but as an industry, it has never shown the backbone to really go, right, we're going to go hell for leather. Because it's almost like if they did, they just know how many people go down. Yeah. And, and, and it's so fragmented across state lines to yeah. horse racing. Every, every every state is is not only there to promote its its own carnivals and and races, but to try and pull down yeah, or deflate knows. the one everyone else. Yeah, and they see it as a zero yeah, sum game. Yeah, so. it, it's not it's not a national no run sport. But it's it's funny because you don't take care of these things. I mean, the banking industry is a really good example. If you don't, and you let the culture go on like this forever, it just needs to, it just ends up someone else will have to come in and just clean you out exactly. in a way that, you know. So anyway, that's Well, as, as my, my, my grandmother used to say, never bet on something that can't speak, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so never bet on Jake King. Uh, <laughs> uh, Super Bowl was yesterday. Now, I know you, I, I rang you and you said you were listening to America the Beautiful. Yeah. You, then you said you didn't know if you were going to be able to sit and watch the whole thing. Did you? That's probably, that's well, probably I, a blessing. Well, I, I said that, but I ended up watching most of the whole thing. Right. I ended up watching all of it too. And it was um, a few people I said, this is a terrible game, which a lot of people said. And I had all these like people get, like, you don't understand NFL. It's a very good defense. And if you don't like defense, you don't. And I'm like, I've been watching NFL since the 80s. I watch every game yeah. every week. I, I know a boring game when I see one. Yeah, like, it yes, was, it was it a no one likes a defensive tussle in any sport. No, and it was a defensive tussle, sure, but the offensive side from both teams, Jared Goff had a shocker. They, he did build a bill changes that was in his mind the yeah. whole time. Tom Brady didn't have a great game until there was 90 seconds left, and, and you just, just knew just, he was going to win the game for him. He just but, knew. but as far as American football goes and Super Bowls go, it wasn't a great game. It wasn't. I mean. The defences were amazing, but the offences were also terrible. They yeah. did not make adjustments. And, you know, so there was a lot of... And the fact neither side could really get a running gun going was yeah. kind of amazing. Brady, uh, uh, Tom Brady became the first player ever to win six Super Bowls. Uh, he, 17 years ago, he led the Patriots to their first title. He has just been ago. around forever. He's 41 years old. Yeah. Um, so it was a... I mean, historically, it was an amazing outcome for that. Uh, for him to do that, uh, but very low scoring. It ended up um, being uh, 13 I think three, our, the our, lowest scoring NFL championship game in history. And our good mate, Racetrack Ralphie, attributed mm. that to AFLW, the low scoring. <laughs> <Did he? laughs> um, importantly, uh, the halftime entertainment oh, with was... Maroon 5. I thought it was te- I, I thought it was just... Why yeah. did he seem to not be singing in tune for no, he, fair he, chunks of it? His singing was, was, was poor. Um, but you know the problem with Maroon 5? All their songs are shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's sum it up to sum it up. But, and the highlight was, was, was that big rapper yeah. coming in and the fur coat. From I, Outcast. Yeah, yeah, I thought his fur coat. He, you like that the best? Yeah, I think thing. he stole the show. But I thought, and then Adam Levine, the lead singer of Maroon 5, of course, took his shirt off, and, yeah. you know, to kind of, I, I guess he got the message got out to him that it wasn't being well received. So he thought, I'll take my shirt off then. Which is funny given Janet Jackson, who yeah. showed one breast, got a career basically ended. Yeah. Uh, he took off his old top, no one cares. Yeah. I mean, and he, and he's, he's got the shocking hats going everywhere. And he's, <laughs> I mean, he just strikes you as a bloke. He should be the lead singer of just a, a, a pretty dull cover band. Right? Yeah, like a pub band. Yeah, pub band. But because <laughs> they've had some level of success and he's gone on and he's made plenty of money being a judge on, on The Voice. Yeah. Now, no, I don't reckon anybody's going to go with Team Adam next season on The Voice <laughs> in America. But he's just sort of like, he's gone, it makes me look tough. It makes me look like a rock and roller if I cover my body with that. And he just looks like a flog. You know? <laughs> uh, Paul Boyd wrote in, should the NFL increase the size of the goal square to improve scoring in next year's Super Bowl? 
Or maybe they should introduce a protected zone. <laughs> That's which right. sounds like an NFL kind of thing anyway. It does. Genuine Glass wrote in, following the Super Bowl halftime show, who is Gil rushing to get to appear shirtless at the AFL Grand Final? <laughs> Mike Brady. <laughs> Mike Brady with the guitar, yeah. And, and, we, and we paid him up with some fake tats for the day. Yeah. It's Mike, terrific. Maybe. Actually, Mike Brady was a thousand times better than yeah. Maroon 5. Well, where Adam Levine had, he's got California across his abs. Yeah. Maybe we just put a big Vic across his <laughs> uh, The Aussies uh, won the second test against Sri Lanka in probably the most pointless. I mean, after losing to India, Sri Lanka just didn't really look in it at all this year. They just weren't up to it. I mean, and the Australian team, as we've said, it's not a particularly powerful Australian cricket team. No, and K- Kawaja any... followed the tradition of be terrible all season and then at the last cast, make an meaningless yeah. innings, make 100. So, you can sort of... so just to make sure he gets a, a, a run for the yeah. Ashes series. I mean, it was almost like watching that at the Canberra test and then, the, you know, there's quite a few centuries scored. You kind of knew then, oh, this is how good batting track is and how bad Schlacker's bowling is yeah. and our players are scoring centuries. I mean, I can't remember. It's a bit a long time since it's some of that bad. Yeah, kind of going back to, what, the 80, 80s, really? Yeah, probably back to when uh, almost the, the yeah, World Series cricket started. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's pretty uh, bad. Luke wrote in, um, should we have spent the last 12 months finding out better ways to cheat rather than trialling these horrible experiments with lacklustre batters? <laughs> I do think that, you know, that's obviously the problem. A few of the bowlers have gone very quiet since it seems we've stopped tampering with the ball. Well, Mitchell Stark, and, and, until the last oh, yeah. couple of days, which was very late, yeah. he was bowling, bowling a lot oh, for most of the summer. You know, oh, I think a lot of people, at least... I mean, who knows? But you do, people were raising eyebrows going, well, you know. Yeah. You, you remember they used to talk about, like, he, he was seen as a like dominant bowler in the uh, you know, world, people yeah. say. And the Australian press always say that about us. But, and then, you know, but you couldn't, couldn't get anyone out. And then there's other, like Pattinson. I mean, what's happened to him? He's continually injured. Mm. I couldn't believe, I know he didn't play the two tests, but he was in the squad was Peter Siddle. And Peter Siddle, I mean, he's... he's He's got to be 60. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, Siddle's in, been included in the squad purely just because he's seen as a nice guy, good culture guy. He's, he's makes no good, intention to good play. Good bloke. Make a good 12th man. Well, yeah, no, no intention. good drinks. <laughs> but that's Car, apparently yeah. what it was. Daniel Lee wrote in, how often should Sri Lanka tour Australia? Oh, every year. <laughs> that's an, an obvious answer. It's, like, it's a bit like the Washington Generals. Yeah. Just, get, just do it every time. Although we lost over there, so, you know, we, we can suck just as well there. Uh, rugby league's had a good off-season, but um, m- more recently Ben Barber uh, has uh, been in huge trouble for an um, alleged altercation with his long-time partner, Ainsley Curry, um, after a seven-hour drinking session on Australia Day. Who, who would think that drinking all day on Australia Day in the sun seems to make weird why things happen? Why didn't he... Leave his girlfriend alone and have a crack at Alex for solo. He, like, <laughs> he likes to play five. Yeah, pick on, pick on someone. His own uh, side. It was at the uh, Townsville Resort and Casino. They caught on CCTV, which is apparently enough evidence of uh, the, the footage uh, to for the Cowboys, North Queensland Cowboys, to sack a barber immediately. Um, he, he he once won the equivalent of Valley M medal, which is equivalent of Brownlow for those that follow Lee. And uh, so this is a guy who's obviously a, a, a seriously good player or has been. Yeah. Uh, he's 29 years old. It looks like he's uh, basically had a violent altercation um, with the mother of his four young daughters and uh, is now being all investigated by the NRL. Now, the NRL have sort of, uh, there were several, apparently several physical sort of incidences, although, uh, and he also allegedly held rocks, according to the Courier Mail, uh, at his partner. Um, it's never, never a good look. I don't think throwing rocks at anyone, unless... I mean, there's look. There's probably one or two occasions where, if uh, where you might be justified throwing rocks at someone, um, but Unless not, you're not often. An execution in Saudi Arabia. Oh. It's probably never to be encouraged. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, like if it's all in good fun, like that case. <laughs> um, so they're looking into it. The NRL Integrity Unit. He's already been sacked by his club, and so they're basically saying if this is all fair out to be true, he can't play in the NRL. Now the NRL said uh, CEO Todd Greenberg. Uh, 
said that he had seen the footage, but he said, if you're violent against a woman, you can expect to be removed from the game. It starts now, says Greenbeck. Now, the funny thing about that is the NRL have been saying for about five plus years that they do not tolerate any violence against women, including Greenberg has said this before. That if you are violent as a woman, you have the you have no place in rugby league. Yeah. Now, funnily enough, rugby league has continued since then to always find a place mm. for people who have been pleaded guilty or been sentenced uh, guilty to uh, family violence. Um, and they had five players at one point last year in the league who were all in that situation and didn't seem to mind that much, just like no. talking tough before. They so, always. Yeah. Welcome back in yeah. the fight. So, so call me suspicious, but also when they. Uh, Todd Greenberg and uh, Renee Castle, who's the, the uh, chairperson of the NRL, uh, start talking tough on this. It's like, well, actually, you've been soft as anything for a long, long time, so you've been pushed to this point where you actually have to. I mean, they let Matthew Lodge come back last yeah, year. So, I mean, think, a, so uh, and it seems that here also the fact that um, this CCT footage seems to also be pretty, that they really can't run and hide on this one, it does appear. But let's hope that they're actually going to get Serious. I never thought there'd ones. be CCTV in a casino. You know? <laughs> yeah, you're stupid on that level. You're stupid to do it, yeah. and then. <laughs> you know, he's, he's just not, obviously not. Yeah, as you always said, never throw rocks at your partner at a casino. Very specific <laughs> advice. Uh, so to finish off, because uh, that's not really a very funny story, let's get to the last bit of humour. Now, I did not uh, tell you about this because I wanted to get your reaction. Okay. And this is well, the AFLX have announced their new rules. Oh, they've got new rules, have they? <laughs> yeah. All oh, right. Well, one we should cover off before we get onto the new rules, uh, which I want to get your reaction because I know you, you're very considerate of what a great thing this is. They have picked four captains. They've got rid of the yeah. teams like they had last year, stopping Melbourne being able to uh, go back to back in the AFL. But they'll never be able to take that away from them. I, I, yeah, well, that's right. The tattoo will remind me forever. So they've basically got four teams which they've named basically after superhero ideas. So uh, Patrick Dangerfield is called Bolts, like a lightning bolt. Right. Uh, uh, Eddie Betts is captaining the Deadlies, which is going to be an Indigenous and Forest Strait Islander side. Nat Fife has the Flyers. And uh, and uh, Jack Rewalt has the Rampage. Rewalt's Rampage. Yeah, how excited are you about the, the Rampage getting up? Oh, Who are you going for? The Bolts, the Deadlies, the Rampage, I or the, the Flyers? Deadlies. The Deadlies is just a better name. Is this the dumbest thing you've ever heard so oh, far? Quite possibly, yeah. Uh, so they've announced the vice captains as well as the captains, uh, and then they go in and tomorrow night. How much do the night? vice captains get paid? Because the four captains get fifty grand each for a couple. That's of what's been three. reported. So um, yeah, nice money. Get it. yeah. So then they get to. Um, they're going to do the AF. They're going to do the AFLX draft tomorrow, which is Wednesday, um, and they're doing it in the day, and they don't announce it till later on, which is sort of the. So they're pre-recording the draft and then playing it on Fox Footy. Yeah, later on. So you know they're hoping that won't leak because it's going to be hard not to leak because everyone's so desperate to know. <laughs> everyone's desperate to know, for hoping that their players. You don't want any of your good players. No, I was surprised that Sean Burbank got picked because I'm yeah. like. He's a veteran, and he, I know he's been pretty good with injury, but you really want him to, like, get through the year, you know? Like, yeah. there's a lot of players here that are you're kind of looking at me, really. Um, I mean, knowing Carlton's like, Patrick Cripps will go down, you know? Yeah, I know. Can you imagine? If something like that happened, that's this concept dead. I mean, it's already... <sighs> um, so then on top of that, they've announced the new rules. Yeah, 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 hit me with those. So we've got four stupid teams, and now we've got the rules. So And they still have, but just to butt it. But they're still playing it on like a rectangular yeah, yeah, soccer yeah. field. Yeah, yeah, Just at Marvel Stadium. Oh. So we're going to see a Zupa goal oh, at Marvel Stadium. And it's just yeah. peak AFL. Um, so it's like, I reckon the AFL had a meeting to decide what would the rules be, and it was like one of those, like, there are no bad ideas, guys. And so a few of the people in the room started trying to push it as stupid as they could, thinking yeah. someone at some point some could. And they just kept going, tick, tick, tick. Okay, okay. So one is... Um, there's going to be a nominated player known as a game changer. Ah. And I think they're called the Gatorade Game Changer. Oh, of course. They're yeah. literally sponsored. Yeah, they couldn't do it without a sponsor. Just, you know, they'll be able to earn double points for their side during the final five minutes of every match. And how long does every match go for? Do we know? It's 
two, isn't it? Two, two halves, halves of, of I've got it written here somewhere. Minutes. Hang on, hang on. I've got it written down somewhere. Um, where is it? Something like that. It's like 10 minute halves yeah. or something. So, yeah, it's nothing very. So, I think it's 10 minutes halves. Um, so, anyway, so for the final five minutes, they basically get to score much, which will mean um, a behind from that play will be two points, a six point goal will be 12 points. And a super goal, which I don't know if it's going to be a super goal this year, will be boosted 10 points to a whopping 20 points. How exciting right. is that? So, so, so you, your Gatorade game changer, will, will, will they get uh, brutally tagged by the other team? Right. The it does seem minutes? like it. Each team's game changer will be nominated by the captain and vice captain with five minutes left to play. Once that decision is made, the match will stop to ensure the nominator does have enough time to get in position. <laughs> Do they? <laughs> Do they have to, does the Gatorade game changer have to, I don't know, wear a, a, like a Gatorade, I don't know, headband or something that, I think they that get tells you that plated in game gold on, on the field? Oh. It's just so, it's so bad. I just oh. can't even, my brain can't handle it. I literally can't handle it anymore, sir. It's just I, so stupid. I'm, 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 I know, I'm and desperate this, to watch it. And now. this excuse of, we well, got to think of it from a kid's point of view. If I was 10, I think it was stupid. Oh, exactly. I think it was the lamest stuff I'd ever seen. Oh. Like, this, they keep, a few people get, oh, it's not only you, and the kid. Well, I feel sorry for the kids. Cause this well, is... I remember last year, my 11 year old watched it, and he, he just turned around. I said, <laughs> I said, what do you reckon, mate? And he goes, why don't they just play footy? Yeah, oh, and, yeah. and kids like footy. It's not yeah. like it's, it's it's not like it has to be sold to them. Yeah, it's like, oh, like how can we improve? How can we get kids to eat fish and chips? Yeah, uh, I don't give, give it give to them. Fish and chips. Yeah. They kind of we're kind of we're kind of trying to figure something out that's already been figured out. Um, so anyway, you now you'll be able to boot a super goal, right? Which remember is ten points. For most players, but in the final five minutes, if you're the Gatorade game changer, twenty points. Is that you following this? Yeah. I'll go. So, it, so of course, so what's the super goal? Can, it's there's from two outside. ways. One, you can kick the ball through the goal from anywhere within or behind the forty meter launch zone. Now, I don't know what the launch zone is, but that's where you have to do it from. Right. Well, launch zone. The launch zone might be on the roof of the any mini, animal, mini, of a mini trampoline dotted around the. <laughs> The line. <laughs> uh, so that's that's one way. Yeah. Uh, you can also kick a super ball by taking a mark in a designated 15 metre arc close to goal, which has come via a kick from within or behind the 40 metre launch zone and kicking the ball through the goal. <laughs> oh, I have no idea what you're I'm going to read that again. You read it to I, me. I'll try. I've read this like paragraph about eight times. Oh. I who, still have no clue. Who wrote this? So taking a mark, so you take yeah, a mark take in a, a mark. designated 15-metre arc close to goal. So there's someone close to goal, if they take a mark, basically, if the kick has come from within or behind the 40-metre out launch zone, then if you kick the ball. So basically it's like if you took a mark in, say, the goal square in a normal game, like but the ball had come from outside the 50. 15, 15 metres that out. Would be, yeah, that would become a super goal. So, the, so this is going to be... Um, you can tell this is going to be very easy to follow. <laughs> Have they explained all this to the umpires yet? <laughs> <laughs> Don't feel sorry for the umpires. <laughs> Talk about stressing them out. Yeah. There's also other ones. There'll be 14 players on each team with eight on the field and six on the interchange bench, but no interchange limit will be enforced. Fine, whatever. The field umpire will throw up the football to commence play at the beginning of each half and after a 10-point goal has been scored. The shot clock will be shorter with players allowed just 10 seconds to take their set shots. Uh, for whether it's a six point or a ten point uh, attempt, uh, players only have to bounce the pink Sharon ball once every twenty meters instead of fifteen meters. Teams who deliberately rush behinds will not only concede a behind; they'll give up a free set shot to the opposition fifteen meters out from goal. So right. That's just saying, don't rush it. Yeah. Umpires will not award marks taken from backwards kicks, except in the fifteen meter forward zone. How are you feeling about those? Oh, I'm, the whole thing's just baffling me. It's gone right over my head. Um, I, the thing is, I mean, in most, in all the other new rules in normal footy, yeah. uh, even if we think they're stupid ideas, yeah. at least when they describe them, you can kind of picture what might be happening. And also, they're usually, even if you don't think it might not work, they're usually trying to 
do something. Yeah. It's got a vague sense of rationality. Yeah. It. Like even but if this, the you execution just don't even terrible. understand what they're talking about or why they're doing it. It is literally like let's get all the worst ideas that you can – like let's yeah. get the marketing team in. What would the marketing team like to see? Yeah. You know, that's basically what this is. It's, yeah. And, and then the idea that it's for the kids is just – I mean, it's child abuse. <laughs> <laughs> It's the equivalent of sporting child abuse. Having said that, I can't wait to watch it. Oh, it's going to be a glorious mess. So they're using, did you say they're using a pink chair? Yeah. The silver silver last year, and that lasted about two minutes. Everyone said it. I just remember all the people covering it last year had to talk up how great it was. And I've bumped into a couple of them since. And off the record, they just take that. And I go, I hope you're getting very well paid. Um, David Berkelman's wrote in, how many PowerPoint presentations and infographics have been developed in the planning for AFLX? Oh, countless, David. But maybe not as many as they, they put out to see who would get the junk at the Super Bowl. Would it because let me tell you, yeah. half the AFL was oh, in yeah. the yesterday. How, how would you, if these are the ideas they've accepted yeah. in AFLX, what was imagine? rejected? Yeah. <laughs> Like, how crazy and how bad an man. idea couldn't get to the AFL League. <laughs> That's right. Like, <laughs> uh, the, the, uh, you know, the one where it said after every goal, every player just snorts some wise and cocks. <laughs> <laughs> Off big, heavily sponsored cleavage. <laughs> Off the, the monster game. energy girls. <laughs> uh, Snurt Underpan wrote in, are you able to confirm the internet rumour that halftime entertainment at AFLX? will consist of two giant jousting Powerade bottles with Daryl Braithwaite singing horses in the background. You know the problem with that? What's that? That's not as crazy as the things the AFL are actually doing. Look, I don't... I you can't s- out-satire AFL. See, Skirt was, was trying to come up with something sillier. And it's not. And it's not. If it's that would actually fine. be the... That would be the rational bit of the whole... Well, you just need to go back to, to the... Remember the AFL launch of AFLX last year when they had, you know... Acrobats and yeah, you know, terrific stuff. Even Gil looked embarrassed, and that really happened. You know, uh, John Walsh uh, wrote in. This is getting to our final listeners' questions. Uh, he wrote in, "Which really nice guy from Married at First Sight is your spirit animal? Please tell me it's Mike." Now, I don't understand almost any part of that sentence. I'm but you being my it. TV uh, I've, guru, I've seen a have bit. you watched Married at First I've Sight? I've seen a bit of it this week. I've got to say. Um, I've only seen the ads, right? I can't remember which one Mike is, but if you, if the, an, if the answer to John's question is which one is your spiritual animal, it would have to be the bloke called Sam right. last night who did a runner from the whole thing. But I watched the ads, right? Yeah. And I'm like, this who are is, these people? They, these people are all broken. Yeah. Like, they're it's, all nuts. It's just amazing to me but, that. Different, different ways and different levels. They're, they're, it's, yeah. it's just there's something wrong with all of them. Yeah. Like, I, I don't understand any of it. And the and the, the three experts put them together, you know. it's and, and How I, can you call yourself an expert in anything and just say it in that show? Yeah, and, and for every series, not one of the couples that the experts have put together have lasted longer than... You know, in about a week. So what I don't understand, right, about that is it's called married at first sight. You get married. Yeah. But it, is it legal? No. It's, obviously, it's not legally it's, binding. It's not legally binding in any so way. So it's just all made up. It's completely. That's fixed. why they describe it as Australia's biggest social experiment, which is just. So you go you know, through the nonsense of jargon. marriage, but it's not, there's no. See, I would like it, right? Yeah. If as, this would make, like, you've got to have some skin in the game. Yeah, in a in a marriage or in yeah. life, yeah. like in anything. If you don't have skin the game, you you don't act the way you you should. Yeah. So if it's married first sight, you are married. Your assets, if you get divorced, are going to be split fifty fifty. Exactly. And you don't know whether if it's like going into it, you don't know if the other person's going to be a billionaire or or you'll be the richer one or whatever. Yeah. So first, straight away, you're risking something like oh, in a real a marriage. Idea. Secondly, I think you should be contractually obligated to stay with the person. Have to live with them at least for five years. <laughs> <laughs> like, otherwise, what's the point? Exactly. It's I mean, just wasting my time. It's like these an interesting experiment that doesn't actually isn't. No one's risking anything. If Channel Nine put that contract 
front of them. They would sign. They would sign. Oh, yeah, yeah. They would sign. Yeah, they wouldn't stop people signing. Huh? And, and if you had to put all your assets up front, you know, yeah. people would still sign. That's how desperate these broken people are. And fame's not, I don't think fame's that worth it. Like the fame that a reality TV star gets, apart from a very few who have managed to carve out radio careers yeah. or, or a few things, and there have been a couple. There's been a couple. Uh, you know, Chrissy Swan, Ryan Fitz. Gerald, a few people like that I can yeah. think of that kind of have actually turned it a, a brief 15 minutes of fame into a, a long one. But apart from that, it's, 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 most of them end up on absolute. Oh, like, yeah, they they're become back a, working in the, even ones that won Big Brother. So yeah. You find out years later they're working in a like, servo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It doesn't seem to me like the risk of the payoff is worth it. Just what gets some free entries into some nightclubs for about six months. Yeah. <laughs> That's about all. But anyway, I'm, I'm glad you watched a bit of it. Is, is, is it an addictive or a terrible show? Oh, no, it's, it's just horrific. I mean, <laughs> you, you, you watch it and just think, hey, how stupid are these people? But I always look at it from a TV production point of view and think, how much fun must it be to edit this? Oh, yeah. And, you know, the, the, the countless hours they have each week have to prune down to 40 odd minutes. Yeah. Um, it, it'd just be some. Stuff. Though. Yeah, that's another one. What do they leave on the floor? Yeah, exactly. A bit like that, the that's, AFLX off cut. Yeah, that's the bit I like. So. It's horrific. Uh, Andrew wrote in, is it just me or is social media the digital version of a lynch mob, regardless of what side of politics you believe in? Well, of course it is, Andrew. That's the whole point. And you know what? Thank God, because I felt like with the decline of the Wild West, <laughs> we really we really lost the ability to participate in lynch mobs. <laughs> So isn't it great that we yeah, now... You can just do it on vigilante, your phone. I'm big on vigilante justice. And nobody and not even to leave, gets hurt. <laughs> no one has to leave their house. Well, I think some people do get physically I think that is the problem with it. Oh, occasionally, but it's more just, you know. Yeah, that's right. Like, there's a... So, uh, yeah, Andrew's, that that is what it is. I mean, I think, you know, let's not pretend it's anything else. Yeah, well, that's what it's there for. It's, Working, working well so far. Uh, Kirsty Wiebeck, uh, found a question, who uh, is a stand-up comedian that... Uh, I her, thought I read your Yeah, her and I did, did um, her, She was on before me at the Comedy Festival, so uh, we would uh, cross paths each night, and then after the show, drink way too much. Yeah, well, that's what you do. Huh? Which was fun. So uh, and so she, uh, I think she's got, she got a Comedy Festival show coming up this time, so uh, very funny. But one of those people that's funny on stage, but I actually think funnier to get drunk with. <laughs> <laughs> and that's saying something. Uh, she's asked, "Where do babies come from?" Um, where do babies come from? Because, well, if you're catched up, Philippines or South Korea <laughs> would be my suggestion. I was going to say from the AFLX draft. <laughs> I think that's how you get. I mean, that would be good if you could draft babies. Yeah, or, or just you know, pinch a kid from the sideline. <laughs> you know. Don't you think drafting people? Could work beyond sport. Oh, it could. I don't think this was so maybe, about the immigra- the maybe, uh, migrant crisis. All married at first sight. Introduce a draft there. <laughs> yeah. But you could, it, you know, if you instead of putting everyone on Manus Island, if you want to come here, you go into the draft. Yeah, you got to do a uh, you got to do a um, basically a combine. Yeah, I was going to say your vertical leap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then each state the, take or picks in order. Yeah, the two k time trial. You know, what would you have for immigration? You know, you know, wouldn't that just have, you'd have all the sporting ones because anyone really yeah. good sport work, we definitely want. Yeah, even decent, just to get them in a, in Australia's genetic pool. Don't yeah. you reckon? Yeah, but then, but then anyone from New Zealand might fall, uh, fail the skin folds. You know, <laughs> don't you think uh, if you put the way to solve, you know, the very divisive uh, issue of refugees policy in Australia? Yeah is don't put it under the Department of Immigration or Border Security. Put it under the Australian Institute of Sport yeah. and just call it a talent testing facility. Oh, and Australians yeah. would be like, yeah, fine, whatever. Fine, you know, is, you know with a you know, seven-foot black kid, bingo, <laughs> yeah, straight, into, straight, the, straight, straight into, into the boomers. In you go, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a leg, yeah. a leg spinner, yeah. desperate. Oh, you can bat. Yeah. Yeah, a, a, a Russian who can throw a shot put eighty yeah, meters. It would just be, in. We'd, yeah. and no one would care. We'd be clearing them through in, yeah. in days. It yeah. wouldn't even be 
You know, that's the way to fix it. It it's is. not complex. Yeah, right. yeah. It's all about where who's responsible for it and what <laughs> you call it. Don't call it a humanitarian program. Just, Just call it a sports enhancement program. And, and we need that. I mean, let's oh, be honest. Um, our know. batting lineup alone. Yeah. Our tennis? Tennis, tennis. I mean, there's a couple of up and comers, but, but you know, nobody really going. Uh, no right guns. We, we, this is where we Athletics, we're, or we're never any good at athletics. Never good at like, Even our we, we all are sub the best athletes swimming country in the world. And yeah. now, look, we've had 85 drownings in the last three weeks. Yeah, terrible. You know. So there's, there's something to be said for that. Oh, I agree with you totally. <laughs> Nothing sensible, but something to be said. And if, you know, if somebody can swim from Manus Island, you know, bang. <laughs> you're, you're, you're the next grand you're, 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 Yeah, you, you, yeah you, give them a place at the you casino. Get a, you get a free house you know, to go with it. <laughs> Just don't sit in front of them. In business class. <laughs> oh, on that note, it's been very good to be back, and uh, it's all happening now. Count the year has started. That is. That is. We'll, we'll oh, we're going to give it. We're going to get it now. We. I do have some t-shirts <coughs> left, but I thought we've been doing t-shirts for like about three years now. Yeah. So we're going to give away copies of. And they're uh, all starting a to get a bit, a bit musky and, and off it now. Those t-shirts. <laughs> so there are a few. Left, so. What I'll basically say to people uh, is if you win, you can uh, – I'll send you a book, but if you've already got my book, you can choose the other book, you know, because there's yeah. two, if you know, the other one, or you can still get a T-shirt. But, you know, that's, so there are options. Um, so did you have one that you wanted to pick? Yeah. Oh, there's a couple of good questions. Oh, they're all good. This, there are a lot yeah. of good ones. I don't know. Should the NFL increase the size of the goal square? Improve scoring in next oh, year's Super Bowl. That's, that's a very good one. So that's going to Paul Boyd. Well done, Paul. Yeah. Uh, we'll be in touch. Um, or if you're listening, just DM me your uh, what you want and your address, but I'll be in contact as well. Absolutely. I, I sent out. I got the last of the backlog off the other day. So oh, that's good. I should be. If you if you haven't got it, you should be getting it this week. But there's only like a couple left. So I'll actually. Clean that up. And this year I vow to be much better. I vow whether I actually will be is a whole <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it's like every other New Year's resolution. Yeah. Oh, I should mention my comedy festival when does tour that start? is uh it's a uh, late March, so March? it's on sale. If you go to Frontier uh touring well, you can buy tickets already. You can buy tickets already or uh it's on my Twitter account and Facebook account. You can find all the details. Um I'll put the link in the show notes too. So um last year all sold out, so um if you want to come along, uh, it's in Mel- the Melbourne Comedy Festival, if you want to come along, um, uh, get in quick. Get in quick because they literally, like, I think like, last year, like, it all sold out and people bugging me, which was a nice feeling, but uh, I, I literally couldn't get, get any more tickets. Well, good, so I couldn't get anyone in. So, um, and then uh, I did a, so if people want to do that. And in terms of other states, um, I haven't got any plans to tour it yet, but if the show goes well, who knows? <laughs> I probably road. will. So, um, we also did the uh, podcast, the live podcast. Yeah, we people did. asking why I didn't put that up. Uh, the audio wasn't great. I'm going to have another go at it and see if I can mix it a bit better and then chuck it up if people are interested. But yeah. um, it, it was it, a great night. Oh, it was a great night. We're, we're going to do probably a few more of those this year. Um, that that one that that uh, you just mentioned that the, the audio wasn't that great. It uh, it could be become like one of these holy grails. Yeah, so that's really, right. I mean, you, you might be able to find it somewhere on the dark web. The real reason is editing out all the racist stuff that you said. <laughs> <laughs> God, which kind of made it run only a minute. <laughs> um, it was just Serge ranting in a pub. Uh, it was fun. So we're definitely going to try and do that again. Like, like, that might be something we can even take into state or something too. Yeah, so, or up the bush or anything. Yeah, so if you'd like to see. Do if you like to see us, let us know. But we are, yeah, so we're keen to do more of that. It was fun. So thanks to everyone that came. So, yeah, um, and I might be able to clean it up. I just. I had a go at cleaning it up, and then you know Christmas happened, and, and I was been drunk for a month and a half. So I haven't been looked at it. Uh, if I'm being completely honest with you, and I think I can. Uh, <laughs> all right. On that note, we will uh, see you next week. <laughs>